Frutiger Aero. It's the name used to describe an aesthetic from the 2000s that you may remember by its glossy icons, water and bubbles, and images of a utopia of technology and nature. You may have a good idea of what this looks like, but what does this sound like? If you're the one sitting down to write the startup sound for this new software called Windows Vista, where do you even start? That's what I'm going to do in this video. We're going to look at several chord progressions, do some song analyses, look at some drum styles, and I'll include my own version of a Frutiger Aero song showing how you can make music like this too. One quick note, in this video I'll be analyzing almost exclusively songs from Nintendo. Nintendo really embraced the Frutiger Aero aesthetic for many years and they produced a ton of music in this style. This makes it a lot easier to pull examples from their library. Apple and Microsoft are two other consumer facing companies that really pushed this aesthetic, but they weren't churning out albums worth of music as often as Nintendo did for a new game or console. I think a good place to start is understanding the themes of the Frutiger Aero aesthetic. Here's four. The first is an optimistic view of an advanced technological future. During the Frutiger Aero era, there was new technology coming out or being made more affordable that improved people's lives for the better. Things like internet use, personal computers, smartphones, and advancements in software and digital content. All of this was happening around this time. In visual design, this may look like images of futuristic utopias where advancements in technology will improve the quality of life for humanity. The second theme is approachable. This new technology was designed with the user in mind. It was approachable simple, intuitive, and human-friendly. How this was done visually was through skeuomorphism, when digital elements look like real-world objects. The third theme is engaging. Frutiger Aero is a vivid, rich experience. The new technology and the devices themselves were captivating, fresh, and an experience to use. This can be expressed through bright and saturated colors. And the fourth theme is sophistication. This technology is unlike what came before. It's elegant, clean, refined, modern. It's new, and it breaks tradition. This comes across with glossy, glass-looking, transparent visuals. When it's broken down like this, making something that sounds Frutiger Aero becomes an easier task because there's ways to make music sound like each one of these themes, which is what we're going to do in this video. Chords really hold the most emotional information, so if we're going to try for a specific theme, this is where it's going to happen. Here's the list of the four themes and how they can be achieved through chord progressions. This is the result of many song analyses, which I'll get to later. I'm going to go over each of these with examples. I just wanted to share the full list first. In looking at chords that matched Hope for the Future, the one that jumped out at me was suspended chords that don't resolve. In traditional music, a suspended chord builds tension and is resolved to a major or a minor. You can do a sus4. You can also do a sus2. Rather than resolving these suspended chords, you can opt to treat it like a normal chord and just hold it out. The chord holds a forward momentum to resolve, which I hear as hopeful and open. This is the exact thought process behind the person who had to make this startup sound for Windows Vista. His name is Robert Fripp, and this is the sound he made. Here's a full list of other chords that match this feeling. We got the sus2, the sus4, the major 7 sus2, the dominant 7 sus4, the major 9, the minor 9, the add2, also called the add9, and the minor add2. I made a little cheat sheet if any of that didn't make sense. For normal major chord, you build it 1, 3, 5, with the 1 being the note name of the chord, like C. For a sus chord, you replace that 3 with a 2 or a 4. For an add 2 chord, also called an add 9 or just C2, you do as it says, add the 2 into your chord, so it's 1, 2, 3, 5. For a 9 chord, you'll need the 1, 2, 3, 5, and the 7, because the 9 implies that the 7 is there. If the 7 isn't there, it would have just said add 9. Finally, if you see a sus with no number on it, it's usually a sus 4. The next theme is approachable. You want something lighthearted and playful. You need it to sound simple, but still be complex. It will sound major, so not a lot of minor chords. You'll find a lot of chord progressions will use jazz chords, a lot of stuff with sevenths. It'll sound similar to lobby or elevator music where it's supposed to be soothing. And the final thing you'll notice is predictable chromaticism will show up in a lot of songs. Before we look at examples, I wanna show the third theme real quick, and that one is engaging. This is that curious or interesting sound you can get from borrowed chords. It's also called minor substitution. If the key is C major, you can borrow chords from C minor. Common 
common bar chords in this key are E flat major, F minor, A flat major, and B flat major. Now we're going to look at three examples which show off the three themes. This is the main theme from We Play. We'll hear the optimism chords from the first theme in the D section. The light jazz chords in the second theme you'll hear throughout. For the third theme, in terms of borrowed chords, we've got E flat. All right, let's hear it. So that's the A section. This chord progression stays pretty simple here. We're just walking up the scale in diatonic seventh chords, C, D, E. Then it's a two, five, one cadence of D minor seven, G nine sus four, back to C major seven. That's repeated four times. And then we go into the B section. So that's our first borrowed chord. We see the E minor 7 is replaced by the borrow chord E flat major 7. Also the cadence in this one is a 4, 5, 1, but the 1 is a sus chord that doesn't resolve. The C section is similar but still different. So that's an interesting 6 bar phrase. In this one, we're changing the pattern. Instead of a one, two, three, we skip the two and it's just a one to three and it goes to the five. They could have made this another two, five, one cadence if they wanted, but this is the section where they're changing up stuff. So we just do a five, one cadence. The next thing that's interesting here is the G sharp diminished seven, which is actually a borrowed chord from a harmonic minor. Normally diminished seven chords resolve up a half step or up a semitone. So this would resolve to a minor or a C E. This one resolves to a F major seven chord shape. Ignore the nine right now, which is F A C E. E. This is a good way to reharmonize a chord if you want to change it up. Add a bass note a third below it. So A, skip the G, then F. Then that takes us to the D section. It's got those optimistic chords I was talking about. This is the Wii Sports Golf Course Select song. I transpose it to C major so it's a little easier to analyze and see stuff like the borrow chord, the B flat. It has the optimism chords I was talking about, the sus2, the sus4, add2. It sounds simple and approachable and sticks to mostly major chords. Those are our first four chords. We're walking up the bass notes, one, three, four, five. The C2 over E means E is the bass, so three. And we're keeping it simple sounding in major. And then it goes to A minor. There's some interesting stuff in that last line. The bass is walking down going F, E, E flat, D. And the C diminished chord is a good choice to resolve to a D minor seven chord because of the chromatic resolution. C diminished over E flat being E flat, G flat, C. D minor seven being D, F, A, C. The E flat and G flat resolve down a half step or a semitone in a satisfying way. And the C carries over to be the seven of the D minor seven. Then we have a nice cadence with the borrowed chord B flat to F. It's got a nice major sound to it. For the third example, this is the Wii Shop Channel main theme. This one's probably the most approachable. It sounds simple, it's mostly major, and it's got the light jazz with predictable chromaticism. All of the chords in the second half of this are a half step apart. It's able to do this because it uses diminished chords on the notes in between. And for borrowed chords, it has the F minor, and it does an interesting thing at the end. It's a descending chromatic, but it goes from a dominant chord shape to a major seven chord shape.
We're gonna talk about the fourth theme now, sophistication. How do we get that modern sound? If you've ever heard old school house music, old school garage music, or watched a movie with like a runway scene in it, this is gonna sound familiar. Back in the day, music producers would load in chords like this to a sampler and play it back on different pitches. This meant if you loaded in a minor seven chord, you could only play back minor seven chords. This method breaks some rules of normal music theory, but it gives you that modern sound. This exact method isn't as prevalent in house and garage music now. You're normally gonna hear variation in chords rather than the same chord shape over and over. As for what chords to use, I spent some time analyzing these garage style Frutiger Aero songs and ended up with a short list. I'm gonna use this chord trigger device that comes with logic to recreate the sound. I'm going to say learn a minor 7 chord, and now when I press C, it's going to play back a minor 7. So that's minor 7, we could do major 7. We could do something like a minor add 2. Maybe I put the 2 up top. And we could do a major 7 sus 2. And then this one is um, kind of hard to name. I called it C9, 11, 13, no 3. We're gonna look at some examples now. In most of the songs I'm gonna show, it's not gonna be this old school style of identical shapes that I just showed. It's gonna be like a mix and match. So it'll be minor, then major, minor, major. But it's gonna sound really similar because that was what it evolved from. This first example is called September 2015 eShop. And the two themes you'll see in this one, approachable. So it's got light jazz with chromaticism. You'll see that here where it goes. Again, it's nice to have the chromaticism because it sounds real simple to the listener. And then the garage chords I'm talking about are here. These are identical shapes. You can see major 7 sus 2, major 7 sus 2, major 7 sus 2. This is like a cascading two five one. It goes two five one, but the one is now a two shape. Five one two five one. That's something you'll see in a lot of breakdowns of this kind of music. Cascading two fives. That's probably not what it's called, but that's what I call it. So it goes B flat major seven sus two. This voicing of it makes it real easy to play because it's just it's just a major chord on the fifth. The fifth of B flat is F. So this is the chromaticism I was talking about. The next example I have is called Wi-Fi Menu Mario Kart Wii. And this one is just theme four of sophistication. We've got the garage chords in here. You'll see it's mixed chord shapes, major seven, minor seven. And then this chord, I kind of struggled to name That's the whole song. Sometimes that's all it takes. This last example is Nintendo 3DS Internet Settings. This is just theme for the modern garage chords. This is where I got that chord from G9 11 13.
This is even easier than it looks. The top part is just these two chords. And the bass is just moving between three notes. I've put together a list of five drum styles that I found in Fruger Aero Music. It could be drum set, garage or house, club, break or drum and bass, or drum machine. Or you could have no drums, that is also pretty common. The thing in the top right corner is mini meters, it's going to help visualize some stuff. This first example is the light drum set. I'm going to play the song is from and then my remake. Every drum example we're going to look at can be broken down to kick, snare, and hi-hat. Some sort of variation of that. The kick drum in this one doesn't have a lot of weight. It's supposed to be real sounding. And you'll see in many meters it doesn't have a lot in the sub. I carved that out with the filter. And then the snare had a lot of reverb on it. It's just a simple rim hit on the two and four. And for this style, you want real sounding hi-hats. And one thing you can do to get a similar effect is to change the velocity of your notes. In Ableton, I changed this feature on the sampler, which means the lower the velocity of my hi-hats, the shorter the sound is going to be. I kind of like that better than just having the velocity affect the volume. The velocity is affecting the volume in this one. It's just by 12%. The second style is this light garage house. This is the 3DS system music theme. So the main difference with this one and the last one is the kick is four on the floor, meaning every single note, one, two, three, four. And then this has a bit of a shuffle hi-hat sound. The general feel for this one is more programmed, so not live sounding like the last one was. The kick on this one is still really light and short. The snare sound for this one is actually claps. And the hi-hat is more like an off-grid shuffle sound, and it's just doing normal velocity to volume. This one also has a tambourine sound in the original. The third example is the Light Club Drums. This one uses the Nintendo eShop music from January 2015. The feel on this one is a programmed loop. The kick has much more bass in it and it's a four on the floor. And you got the normal snare on the two and four. This one's actually a pitch down clap. And then for the hi-hat, this is an open hat on every upbeat. And the final piece of percussion is a rim sound. So all together. The fourth style is the break drums, the DMB drums. And this one I have two examples for. So this is the September 2015 Nintendo eShop music. For this first style of DMB drums, you want a real sounding loop. And then the kick pattern is something that's kind of common for DMB. It's not a four on the floor style. All this is is a A, B, A, C pattern where the C section is like a fill out of it. And the loop has a kick, kick, snare, snare, kick, kick, fill. This next example is way more of a programmed sound. This is the Wi-Fi menu for Mario Kart Wii. So the kick is a real punchy processed kick. And then the snare is a more real sounding snare. The crazy snare sounds are coming from doing stuff with the velocity and pitching up the snare for fills. And then for the hi-hat sound, I just used a ride cymbal. 
This last style is a drum machine style. The example I'm using is the Wii Shop channel main theme. Most of the drum machine styles I hear use the Roland 808, 909, or the CR78. Those are all real popular. This one, I used the 808 to remake it. This song uses a bossa nova pattern. In the kick, that means notes on one and four. For the snare sound, I'm using the 808 rim in a 3-2 clave pattern, three notes in the first bar, two in the second. It's a real common bossa nova pattern. And then the hi-hat sound is the Roland 808 maracas. Now I'm going to break down a song that I made and show how I use some stuff from this video to make it sound Fruger Arrow. First, let's look at the chords. So in this song, I went for the first three themes. For the optimistic theme, you'll see the sus chords, the add two chords, also written as just normal two. As far as approachability, it stays lighthearted and uses playful chords, mostly major. It's, it's simple sounding. And then the engaging, curious chords is the minor substitution. You see I use the flat six, flat seven, and the flat three. And also there's an interesting section right here, which I'll talk about later. So this song is an intro, A section, a B section, A section again, and then a B section to the outro. And the intro is just the end of one of these B sections. So I'll analyze the intro when I analyze the B section. So the A section here. So it's staying diatonic, C, D minor 7, C over E, and then an F sus 2. After three times of that, it goes to a B flat major 7 sus 2, to F2, A flat 2, to B flat. It will repeat again, and I just change the ending this time. If you highlight the notes in Logic, they'll show the chord right here. So it's C, E flat, add 9. F, G, sus4. So lots of add to and then the sus4 using those optimistic chords. I really wanted to hammer that home. The B section, I wanted this to sound kind of like a parade or something like that. C to B flat. B flat's a borrowed chord. For the third time, I wanted to start changing it up. And then this gives us a good opportunity to spring into the second half of the B section. C, B flat, F. But then the B sus4. I chose the B sus4 because it's the 5 of E, and this is an E chord, E add 9. For this section, I wanted to do something that sounded dreamy. For this, you can use a whole tone scale. Each of the notes are two half steps or two semitones apart. I wanted to use like a falling shape, and I wanted to end on the G, and G is the 5 of C, which is the chord this section repeats back to. So that means it would be like a B major shape to G sus. And I didn't like that sound. So I went with the B flat there. And it's even better with the B flat sus too. So if you just work in reverse to set up that falling sound. That's how we got to E. So it goes E2, C major 7. This did take a while to put together, but I was happy with the final result. We can skip that A section, it's the same material, and go to the B outro. So the B outro section is the same as the B section up until that final A flat major seven chord. That's where we start to change. So it looks like a two, five, one here. D minor seven, G nine sus four is a dominant chord shape. And then a weird chord in here, a B flat major seven flat five and then an A7. So the B flat major seven flat five, I believe this started as a tritone sub, but it sounded too predictable. So a tritone sub, you can basically think of it as you have your target, which is the A7 there. 
and you can just go a half step or a semitone above that and build a dominant chord. But it sounded too like honky tonk and predictable, and I don't really like that sound. So I switched it up a bit. So instead of it's I just really like this chord, the major seven flat five. It sounds like a boss battle chord. Next is D minor nine, G Og nine. You can use augmented chords like this to replace dominant ones if you want. And then I could have ended it there on a C, but I wanted to do like a more grand outro. So I'm doing like a showbiz walking down the bass outro. So how I harmonized that, I just put a C minor seven on top. And then for the A, I did D dominant, A flat six, and then C major seven. Now I'm going to open the project file for this song. We're going to look at the drums real quick, and then I'm going to play a couple sections. So I wanted to use drum machine sounds for this one. This is what the A section sounds like. This is mostly Roland 808 sounds. I am using kind of like a trap snare. But other than that, this is the 808 clap, 808 hi-hats, a Roland 808 kick. For the B section, I wanted the drums to do like a call and response thing. I'm playing some of the chords with the drums so you can hear it better. That's what the drums sound like. Every sound you're going to hear except for the drums and the piano. All of these are presets from my pack. It's called Open World Volume 1. It's over 300 serum presets or one shots if you don't have serum. And they're all in this style. So if you want all of these sounds and a lot more, you can go to varsitybeats.com or the first link in the description. This is what the intro sounds like. I layered like a mallet sound with the bass. For the chords, there's a preset I called Shop. This is also a preset, it's like a morphing piano sound. And this is one of my favorite, it's a choir sound I called Vocal Synth 3. And then you've got the piano sound, again, not included. I feel like piano is such a big part of Fruger Arrow. And then I have this really cool, almost flute sound. It's a uh, lead mellow four. Again, really emphasizing the sus chords here. Now let's look at the outro. This is the section where it starts being different from the rest of the B section. And then I want to show something I did in the A sections. Something you'll see is every eight bars, there's like a change. The first one, it sounds like this. Mostly piano for the lead. And then another layer is added in. And then it goes to a new melody for the A section two. This one has multiple voices playing at the same time. And then the change that happens here is a new shaker sound comes in in the drums. And then A section three is completely different. It is a call and response. A section four is a repeat of the two sound, but on a new voice. It was on piano. And then it's on a new instrument that's called Pluck Red Coin. If you like this song, it is also out on streaming services. I made a new artist account just for this style of music. It's the second release on it. The link to that as well as the sample pack is in the description. I want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>